and I have with me Yashwant from JSW for the discussion, joining me for some of the key issues that he can throw his perspective on. And I, JS, lead the energy and infrastructure practice. I have been deeply focused on sustainability-related issues over two decades. And one of the key things that JSW has successfully done. is in terms of the entire ev story over the next few years thank you for joining us yashwant for, for this discussion and to share your perspective you have been very instrumental and key in terms of building up the entire ev portfolio especially mg motors at jstop thank you so much we should glad to have been here i look forward to the engaging discussion and sharing lights on how we as an ecosystem everyone coming together can we build the ev penetration in india which is definitely uh, the need of the hour Yeah. because when we look at the entire overall ecosystem towards sustainability evs are going to be one of the major components of the pillars especially in terms of smart cities smart cities and smart infrastructure and starting from a 1 billion dollar in terms of the total capex looking to 100 and 100 billion dollars by 2030 or with by 2032 how do you see the market evolving and in terms of the key gaps one is in terms of the infrastructure invest requirement second is in terms of the capital investments required the third is in terms of the overall technology that's required uh, how do you see india contributing to these aspects and how will you, india secure those investments what's your take at gist of your this or overall from an ev industry perspective i think how we are going to be ev market is that yeah expecting it to definitely be the fastest growing sub segment in the overall passenger vehicle space uh, right now we are at 2 and a half percent penetration of the overall passenger vehicle market which sits somewhere 4.3 million and uh, with the market expected to become 5 and a half 6 million by sy30 ev penetration is supposed to go up up to at least 20 percent based on us china benchmark which takes us to a market of approximately a million ev cars and today closing this year we are at approximately One half lakh EV cars, so that's a six x growth or forty percent key growth in the So how can all of us contribute towards that? What are the roadblocks that we see? Roadblock is a definitely capital investment, and for capital investment, what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove how EVs are acceptable from consumers from a total cost of ownership point of view. How the government is coming up with both demand side and supply side levers to enable that EV adoption, be it the PM E Drive scheme or FAME two scheme that just Uh, lapsed or the cafe norms that are being made more stringent with cafe XT from 2027 onwards. And apart from that, is how we can locally manufacture EVs in India in a cost competitive manner to bring down the ultimate overall cost differential between our isolated EV vehicles. So I think there are different levers in play for different themes that support those levers, which will ultimately take us from that bridge of two and a half percent to twenty percent. As JSW, as an industry participant, we are definitely focusing on local manufacturing, localizing our products, bringing them at a cost differential to the customers. So ultimately, the customers can benefit, and the environment can benefit. And along with industry players, we're trying to create more and more awareness for these products through different program schemes. Uh, in terms of capital, definitely uh, capital proving the unit economics is again an exercise for. for all the investors as well as operators but now as we see the consumers accepting evs as well as seeing that the charging infrastructure coming up through both ppp partnerships as well as government support i think there's a lot of traction that's happening in vc with mahindra attracting investment from bi and tpg from sorry from temasek and tata from dbg there's a lot of understanding already built into the investor community which can be promulgated for us that's how we are looking at the entire landscape and trying to contribute to it thank you that's a very interesting perspective that you're sharing because what you're saying is in a way the fame two policies and fame one actually started off in terms of being an incubator yeah, for this ecosystem and they have done their job in some sense and now private capital is ready to take the risk correct right? So in a way, you think there's no need for any further subsidy going forward, and more in terms of private sector, private capital coming in. Would that be a correct way to look at it and see great parity, or else in terms of parity between ICE engine and APs? Quick forward. That's what it is. I think what we want to see right now, we want the industry to stand on its own feet, and the industry can stand on its own feet where subsidies go down. 
and there is an internal volition to move towards EVs. So we are seeing that with awareness growing up and with more of supply side measures coming in rather than demand side measures. And I think when that happens and when it is established that people are consuming EVs out of their own volition and not just supported by subsidies is when private capital deployers become more confident about the market. Case in point being the renewable industry in India, where renewable today stands on its own feet. I think EV is in that trajectory. The 1% to 3% penetration between 21 to 24 was achieved through the policies you mentioned. I think now going forward, the policies will play a part, but the awareness and the demand and the supply interaction will take that 3% to 20% in the next five years. So that's what I feel. Another, thank you. Uh, another interesting perspective that you've shed light on is in terms of the component manufacturing and in terms of localization. How do you see SMEs playing a pivotal role in terms of localization or EV? And what is the growth story there for the Indian economy? And what are the roadblocks? And how do you think we should plan and unlock private sector capital in that? So in terms of, there's, there's a bunch of SMEs who are who are operating in the entire auto component segment, be it the Kulomanda of the world, be it Sona, be it another Bell Rice. So I think a lot of components, a lot of component manufacturers are there who are moving ahead from like a complete ICE to like EV platforms to support EV manufacturers. Now, how we can unlock private capital over there is through different investment models. And while I mean of those investment models, there is upfront investment both on the OEM side as well as on the auto component manufacturer side. So sharing of that investment, structuring that investment together and then amortizing or sweating that asset over a long period of time. And these are certain models and structures that we have been thinking aloud as well along with auto OEM manufacturers. And I think once we hit that for one model and we can replicate that successfully, is then I think that that same model can be promulgated in the industry for all newer EV launches. So I think taking a very, very traditional view might not work for these SMEs, but joining hands together, sharing investments and investing together to manufacture components for DD might create the roadway or the pathway to further DD adoption and gains for SMEs in that sense. Interesting. Do you think the government should come up with some kind of a measure in terms of an ecosystem, be that it through a policy incentive or a regulatory framework for SMEs to promote this kind of sharing of risk and investment going forward? So at least to set the platform or do you think there's a need for an alternate structure in that sense? I think definitely the government can come out with support and be it in terms of either PLI in auto components manufacturing that we be speaking about or PLI in charging infrastructure that is already there in place. I think that what we've been discussing at least from a charging infra policy, there is a very big opportunity for SMEs there, apart from auto corporates as well. And what we see is when we did our research as well, most of institutions, you call it hospitals, you call it hotels, you call it hotels on highways, all of them want EV charges because they think that by having EV charges, we can we can improve our visibility and understanding that they're not able to get that because they can't justify unit economics on a small scale. So we've been talking to people where SMEs can actually plug that gap in and can aggregate EV charging demand, can speak to the EVVs and the execoms of the world, have these EV chargers installed, do an EPC, do a repair and maintenance contract and have that contractual cash flow. So out there if the government can actually come out and support SMEs to bridge that gap. I think that will be extremely favorable for the entire ecosystem. And the coming back into the auto components OEM spot, I think PLI for manufacturing there and various incentives which can be in the form of fixed capital subsidies, power subsidies, etc. And uh, creation of special economy zones, I think that can be extremely uh, helpful because all auto EMs are definitely uh, liaising with these complex manufacturers to see how we can jointly invest the model that I told you about it. We've also been thinking thinking about. My kid. So I think you have made two interesting points. One is to phase out subsidies. The market is ready for private capital and private risk. Second is in terms of moving towards the lower end of the value chain, look at SMEs setting up SEZs with more incentives, yeah. especially on power. That's a good key takeaway that will really change the dynamics. Then when we look at EVs, one of the key things that always pops up is in terms of security and that links to energy security. At the end of the day, how do you see localization of batteries coming into the main street in India? Do you think India should be looking at uh, sourcing supply chains on a long term? Should we look at 
developing indigenous technology how do you see that industry moving i think definitely the latter where we need to kind of build our own battery cell manufacturing capability but i think the roadblock over there is the availability of uh, critical minerals like lithium today 90 to 95% of lithium is being imported and there's definitely been efforts and budgets being allocated towards towards exploration of reserves of lithium where some bit of some bit of success has been has been tasted but i think once we have more outlay towards packing manufacturing setting up our own technology i think that will a create a lot of security towards this entire part and then apart from that i think we need to enter into long term contracts with certain countries where lithium is available and getting them in on a long term basis so that we have to have a safety of supply of the minerals which helps us in battery logic i think that's that's the limited point over there but definitely if we data part and still a lot of things evolving in the space we haven't seen a lot of success so let's see how how things start off fair point so in a way what you're suggesting is in terms of supply chain and energy security look at more investments on technology government subsidy coming in towards more uh subsidy on r&d and innovation and also on sourcing of supply chain it's on a long term basis so that it is the benefit is passed on and we should mainly focus on lithium i feel it and how do you see sodium based batteries over a long term period no exam still to diesel to ray or still to diesel it's, it's very similar to the entire green hydrogen story we have to see you all do our calculations it all works out but the adoption of green hydrogen still will take time so i think new newer battery cell evs etc are still very still very uh, late in the game i'm afraid so i think uh, pretty much your perspective is way valuable because you have covered one in terms of investments policy support and government intervention required technology one last segment which is the missing puzzle piece of the puzzle that needs to be addressed is in terms of interlinkage of the ev market or public charging infrastructure with the carbon market What do you think the government should do, or in any case, the cafe norms is a matter of time before they are rolled out, and a lot of companies are looking at increased capacity augmentation on the EV segment. But how do you see in terms of carbon emissions and carbon norms and carbon market actually being integrated in a modular fashion? Any thoughts on that? How can we monetize? Any thoughts around that? I think. What is happening over here? The cafe norms is definitely a benefit, and the cafe norms are going to be practical. I think the cafe three, which we heard of, ninety one, ninety one being the number from twenty twenty seven onwards, and most of the OEMs are trying to achieve that. So that is a right, right step in the correct direct direction. Apart from that, what I feel is the carbon sequestration market is still evolving in India, and there are a lot of startups that are actually trying to create a carbon market where there can be free carbon trading, trading of carbon credits. how that can be integrated with auto oems that is still uh, a case in coil is still trying to evaluate that we haven't made progress on that part but i think that if something needs to be done that should be the first point where the carbon credits you have for example in the case of ngv are very positive on the cafe norm given most of our portfolio is photocon b evs which have the highest uh, weightage in the cafe norm as well which is of 3 so how we can monetize that i think that will be a very big financial lever for all OEMs focused on EVs, but not not a lot of progress has been made. I think that's next step we need to evaluate once the cafe knox can become more stable. Thank you, Shobhat. I think it's been brilliant to get your perspective. Just to sum it up, I think uh, the government has a key role to play, except that now it's no longer looking at just playing the role of providing subsidy, but more in terms of looking at contributing in developing the. supply chain be that be in terms of raw materials or in terms of smes that's where the role is second is in terms of the integrating and acting as a catalyst for the carbon market be that be in terms of subsidy purchase that model needs to be developed and last as you rightly mentioned is in terms of the private sector capital coming in with the market maturing i think uh, we will see a lot more action thank you very much for sure for your interest thanks a lot thank you Thank you.